For 48 hours straight, some of the best poker players from around the world will be putting their bankrolls and their reputations on the line. We started the clock with names like David Viffer Pete and Annette Oberstad coming to the table. And so it's no surprise, it's been an explosive start. Last time out on the big game, season five. Viffer had a great start. Trickett needed a reload. The Devilfish was dancing, and the qualifiers kept leaving at D hand. I got a straight draw on the flush draw. I've top seven. He was playing so good, so I have. <laughs> with a stellar lineup to look forward to in season five, who will line their pockets with gold, and who will be left with dust? Is it Pop Bell and Lou doing this guy? Eviction time is looming as one of our players will be heading out the door, pushed by the fans. Unique to the big game is the eviction process. This season, there's two ways for our players to be voted out of the game. Eviction will alternate between an online audience deciding on who they would like to boot out of the game. Well, I think the viewers like me. And the players themselves will vote secretly for the player they would like to leave the table. Can you vote for the dealer? The only way to avoid eviction is to gain immunity by being the most active player at the table. It's so brutal. Oh, shot. Oh, thank you. Two hours into this yeah, poker no, no, marathon, no, 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 no. and I've been joined all the way me. by Dusty Schmidt. Biggest winner so far, Viffer, who was the biggest winner last season, off to a flyer tonight. And the Devilfish turning history on its head, 7,000 pounds ahead. For Fatusi and Tilly, it's been a nice start as well. The losers, however, Ryan Smith, Andre Pedersen, both qualifiers off the table. And for Trickett and Channing, it's been rough going so far. Net Oberstadt, not down too much. Lines are 25 and 50 pounds, but don't let that fool you. What with the straddles, the raises, the blind bets, this action has been fast and furious. It'd be Hugh Hefner, wouldn't it? <laughs> 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 open for 150. Bruno's made it 400 with the ace queen. Well. This is going to be yeah, Devilfish has made okay, the cold call. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I think they've let him take it out, actually. Yeah. You think I'm not going to call if I, I didn't know? know. I, uh, I didn't know I was in the blind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a friendly cash game. Yeah. 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 These are obviously the kinds of spots that Viffer gets in a lot. Yeah, and, and this is like this bet size right here, just making such a small bet with so much behind for each player. I, I'm wondering if Viffer is thinking he can push him off his hand. It, I wouldn't be shocked if he kind of turned his hand a little bit into kind of a semi bluff and maybe check raised him. But, you know, he, he's been hitting so many flops, Viffer, so often, so far, that you forget that there is a downside to right to playing weak hands out of position. Exactly. Exactly. And it looks like he's... Uh, is he just called us? Yeah, he's just called. I, I still think uh, he's going to be checking that turn. <laughs> we'll probably see this go check, check most of the time. Big Fish has got the harmonica going. Quite musical. See, and Vicker's got to be a little confused because he would think I, that, that a lot of the like king queens and ace queens and even pocket kings, pocket aces types of hands would be checking back that turn for pot control slash they're not even sure they have the best hand anymore. And so I think Viffer kind of shot him that look like, what do you got, buddy? Right. <laughs> you know, he's wondering if he did just make ace king. But I don't think Viffer's going to get away from this too super often. I think if Fiducy maybe went and bet 3,000, he might tank fold. But Fiducy might bet 3,000 thinking he's got the best handy. Yeah. 
I just think Viffer thinks that Fatusi's going to check back so many of his like marginal hands on the turn that the, that that turn bet really confused him, especially combined with the flop bet. Because when he bets so bet so small on the flop, maybe it could be like an ace king that you know wanted to kind of keep the pot a little smaller. And now that it hits jack, now it's you know now he's really excited. So. Bruno's going to be the most surprised guy in the room. Well, he, he can't fold. He can't fold getting four to one. No, no way. That's a very trivial call. Even though he's going, what can I beat? But it's just too good a price. I don't think I can fold, and I don't like giving speeches. I'm 99% calling you. I'm 99% losing. Wow, that's a that's a stat. Come on. I think he thinks Queen Jack a lot. The, the way he kind of played it kind of makes sense for Queen Jack. I don't think he thinks Ace King anymore with that sizing. So when you fold for two hours to call attention Jackson, I plus nine and Jackson, you would have flushed there and you set out with the best. It's a little different. I mean, I'm not in love with Fiducy's river bet there because Viffer's call actually represents a ton of strength on the turn out of position there, especially when he's representing Ace King so much with both the pre-flop and post-flop action. I don't know. I know I can I can bet you can write. After one single dramatic hand, we've lost Patterson, but that means we say hello to our third party poker online qualifier, Danara Kazieva. I do know about her, Dusty, is that uh, she's played, she's played on TV before. She came in sixth, made the final table of the celebrity event on the WPT uh, in California only a few months ago. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a high-profile event. Yeah, exactly. She can play. There's no question about that. Do you know her? I have, uh, no, but I, I, I know of her. I know of her, and I, I know her reputation is, uh, is strong. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so we have three women playing world-class poker here. Fantastic. The party poker big game. This, this, is, uh, this is pretty cool. Also, in three hours, there's a one-hour break. I gotta go to the bathroom. Well, Denara has sat down with 8,000 pounds. We can get our phone back if you want to make a phone call. To be fair, I mean, you know, the online qualifiers have gotten hammered, but you have to say they, they've all played quite well. They've played great. The deck just uh, did not cooperate for them. I could have kept it in my suitcase. Sorry, nice thing about this game, it's we're about two hours in 48, so we've finished less than 4% of this big game, and there's already now, I think about 140,000 pounds on the table. So that's a good start for us. What? Yeah. I says I'm not going to go look up that hand or Biffer anything. with the biggest stack of greater than 30,000 pounds, and Sam Trickett's got over 20. No, he just used to be he brought it up. Right? He's overly defensive. I think he's going to look on all the hands he when he gets it. his phone. Yeah. He's overcompensating. I study and care less about what other people have. <laughs> Seriously. People try to show me their hand in the room. Anyway, Darren, so we're going to show you live on the internet now, so everybody else knows now. So you're going to so we can have that bet now. We don't want to wait three hours. I had a flush. Thank you. Yeah. You did have a flush? Yeah. Well, of course you had a flush. That's why I folded two pairs. Yeah. Was that was a good lay down. I guess you was the lucky it was against me, right? That's not to say that I don't ever bluff. No, well, that was just a situation. Yeah. Tuesday yeah. with top pair. He's, I guess he checks again, huh? Yeah. Well, this is what Viffer was saying. Is he walking the dog? Is that what you, is, that, is this what you call that? I guess so. I mean, Annette's got to think her four is the best hand at this point. It's just it's checking all the way down. I, I wasn't thing. watching, but. No. And I think she's going to be really confused by this call. No. You don't see guys take this line too often.
be interesting to see if she turns her hand into a bluff here or not, if Fiducy checks. Now it looks like Fiducy's thinking of leading out, turning his hand into a bluff. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming. Wow. And you don't particularly like that play. I gotta go well, I don't know what to phone. make of it, really. I, I think so a lot of it is, I think Annette can have anything at that point when she just gets checked to twice and bets the turn. Yeah, I to to so I might want to check and give her a chance to kind of rep a five there. But I, I, I do find that interesting that he that he uh, led. And I, I thought it would have been would have been pretty interesting to see if Annette would turn her hand into a bluff. I think more than likely she'd probably check back. Bruno into a nice bit of profit. But Viffers, the big winner, and also he and Fatusi. Look at Fatusi, over 51% V-chip. Yeah, Fatusi's playing some poker. Five out of the eight players ahead in this game right now. We'll be back from dusk till dawn casino as the clock counts up to 48 hours of non-stop cash game action. This is the cash game that everyone's talking about. The most flamboyant characters, the biggest pots, and it all takes place over 48 hours of non-stop play. Let's head back to the action. Last year, Neil Channing played the whole 48 hours in that karate suit. And, well, you gotta admit, it's, it's more comfortable than the suit and tie. I mean, the devilfish is going to be feeling pretty clamped up in about two days if he's still at this table. To me, the devilfish in the suit is the best devilfish, you know. Yeah, he's, he's looking Sunday sharp. Best on he's you. looking sharp. And he's up money. And he's beaten the game. He can afford more of those nice suits with uh, what he's been making so far. Bruno's opened this up, called by the Devilfish and Trick it on the button. Maybe. Maybe I should have said it. Do you remember when I bet 150 and the one I bet 200? So that's right in the middle. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, it's really tough. I'm a checker. Devilfish with the power flop again. Yeah, what a flop. It's going to be real hard for him to get much action. He might get a check call out of Fiducy. I think this, this game has started off so much more typical of a live cash game than a TV cash game in that everyone's so relaxed. Perhaps it's the setting, everyone's chatting naturally. It's just got that nice feel to it, you know? Yeah, and Fiducy here is actually uh, taking the lead here in this spot with uh, two pair, although as the numbers indicate, they're still 50-50 uh, because Devilfish has such a strong draw. And, like, there's no way, I mean, you can't really raise here if you're Bruno, can you? I mean, what, what, what's, what's the idea here? Is, it, is there a merit to raising? No, I don't think so. I think he check, check calls, and, you know, at this point now, Devilfish really has to have, like, king, queen, or an eight, he's thinking, to really uh, to be betting for value a lot. And, you know, he's, Fiducy's gonna have to make a discipline check fold here. This is, this is basically the worst card in the deck to, to hit. Amazing that the Devilfish is, I don't know, if he keeps hitting cards all night, he's gonna be a, be interesting opponent. Yeah, and if you run through the range of hands here, you know, Fiducy's not going to just instantly fold this, but he's going to fold it, I'm sure, eventually. I mean, if you look at all the hands, Devilfish is not going to bet aces or king, or a, uh, ace king in this spot. It's pretty much going to be a flush or an eight or a queen every single time. Right, and ace jack is checking back every time, right? Every time. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I say that I think oh, Devil just checks back in ace. There are some players that would turn ace jack into a bluff here occasionally, but I, I think Devilfish would probably be pretty happy to take the show down here if he had a hand like ace jack. The Devilfish is gonna, one thing he's good at is talking people into something. Let's see if he can work his magic here. He's trying to put on a show here. 
Oh, as Fatusi called him. Oh, I don't understand what you can have. No, he hasn't done it yet. How can you call? Bet the flop, then bet the turn, and then send him in. <laughs> straight, flush come, and you still bet. Oh, he's right. right. beat, but. All the way, right? You're bluffing all the way, you got bloody nothing. <laughs> it looks like he got bloody nothing. It's really not the type of board where he's going to be betting with <laughs> nothing. That's too much. Bet. And then what happened if I call this bet? Are you happy if I call this bet? I'm in the taxi. I think he's going to talk him hell. into I it. I don't know why. Let me know what he does. Sir. See, the thing is, is it's really hard for him to have nothing here because the only types of hands that have nothing here are like pocket fives and like six five and <laughs> hands right. like that. Like any hand that has like any sort of face card, any it has like a better two pair or a straight or a flush. It's just not a spot where Devilfish is really ever going to be bluffing. All right, you got it. He's going to hate like himself. It. Okay. Yeah. All right. I had everything all the time. And the devil nice fish talks him into it. He's gonna, I think he's, he's nearly the big winner in the game right no. now. Yeah. It goes worse on the turn. Well, I don't, I and better on the river open, only. Play, no, straight you down. lose on the turn. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah he's just about 1,200 pounds behind yeah, nice uh, Viffer at this point. I had two pairs. Going back a while, I used to play, um, I used to play cash games for like three days at a time. Three days at a time, you know? But obviously, you know, I mean, in them days, I, you know, I could, I could play forever. You know, if there's enough money on the table, I'd stay. I was playing a guy, if this was on a movie, you won't believe it. And what happened was, I put a big bluff in, and this guy had took some, uh, some painkillers with whiskey. He was a bit of a drinker, and he fell off his chair. He was actually in like a, I thought he was dead. And I seen that he had the nuts, you know, he had the best hand. And he was obviously going to call me, but it fell off his chair. And in them days, I didn't have so much money. So I said, well, I guess I win the pot. And just as I was going to get the money, um, his, his eyes flickered open and he says to his brother who was making, who was serving the drinks, he went, John, call that bet. That was the last words he said he died. And I, that's, I swear to God, I mean, and as I was taking him off in an ambulance, my friend Tony Boo, a boxer, I says to him, I said, that must be unlucky, he's in the world. I said, I've just been beat by a dead man. And he says, well, I think he's a bit unlucky than you, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he was going off in an ambulance, he won one hand all night. And that is actually a true story. Most of the players on this table, you know, they could write what they know about poker on the back of a stamp. I've been playing a lot of years, and the devil's going to get him tonight, hopefully. Fish is winning. <laughs> and that book, Devilfish, a bunch of chapters in his book about the time he spent in prison and, you know, as a jeweler, a businessman when he won his first phrase. I mean, it's, uh, he, he's, had a, he's had an interesting life. He's a special fish, but he's a fish. I'm really hoping today. It's my favourite thing when the fish refers to himself as a fish. I'm going to say sorry that the fish is playing good. Sorry, I'm just looking for you. And. Annette's made this 150. Viffer's made a 450. Annette with the re-raise. This is the four bet now with the air. You like it? I do like it from time to time, certainly. <laughs> I mean, generally four bets, it's real tough to four bet air and show a profit profit with that with that type of hand because it has to work so much. But against Viffer, whose range is so absurdly wide, it's going to work more often than uh, it would against a lot of others. And also, you just want to let him know you're not just going to lie down all day. She's been doing that her, her whole life. Not that it's been that many years, but there are five or six of them at least. Annette Overstadt has been, has been uh, out duking anyone who <laughs> tries to be more aggressive than her. Have you yeah. played with Annette? Uh, I don't believe I ever yeah, have, actually. I think I've got a tell on, like, uh, on uh, the cameras. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So I think if someone runs a big I've, uh, I've definitely yeah. watched her play a fair amount, though. Oh, the camera stays on them a little longer? It's actually, I mean, it's getting a few years on now. I think it was It's almost four years ago when she won the million pounds in uh, the World Series of Poker Europe at the age of 18. So it's like, wow. I think that's a tell. Yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. And, she had to wait three years to come over 
the United States just to play the, 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 the rest of the series over in Vegas. But she was already a you know a champ, so that's uh, that's pretty impressive. I, I don't know how often that'll ever uh, be replicated in poker. Now, how different is this? This time she raised, and this was Channing who came over the top of her. Oh, you mean on the screen? Um, and then Viffer cold, cold. And Annette's now. It's yeah, Viffer's not going to fold a hand like that. That's. Uh, it looks like Channing's starting to implement a little bit of a Viffer's move with these sort of like really small little three bets. Yeah, and look at this. So Channing with the three bet, Viffer with the cold call of the three bet, and Annette flopping the nuts. Wow. Well, I was going to say, Channing, I really don't like this bet unless he's going to bet it three times. Because I think one time is sort of wasting your money. But if he does take that advice, he's in a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> he's up against the Stone Cold now. Well, not the Stone Cold. We got, he could have, she's got one hand to worry about aces. But. Well, explain that to me a, a, a little more with, with, with Channing. If, he, if he's just betting this one time, he's getting called by almost everything. Well, he's going to get called by all the, you know, queen jacks and king queens and diamond draws and aces and tens, obviously. And so most of the hands he can eventually push off. So I don't, I think, I think you're sort of donating money to the pot, just betting it once. But if you're willing to commit to three shells, you get, uh, you'll get a lot of folds by the river. And in that big smile there, she went for the check raise, and well, she's got the pot anyway. Yeah, when you have the deck that crippled, I kind of don't mind uh, the check caller and let, let uh, Channing hang himself a little bit. This is the first TV cash game that I'm playing with my own money. I don't really play cash games, so for me to play like a 30,000 pound pot, like that's a lot. So. You know, hopefully I just won't get affected by it and still be able to play my game. I'm just going to be myself, you know, I know a lot of people don't like me and I know people think I'm annoying and I'm boring, but you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play good poker. And I am going to trick my opponents, I'm going to make them think that I don't have a hand when I do have a hand, and I'm going to just make sure that they make mistakes against me like they always do. And that's how I'm going to take all their money. We're back after the break with more from the Party Poker Big Game here at the Dust Till Dawn Casino. This is the Party Poker Big Game 5. Big characters in action at the moment and the money is flying around the table. Let's head back to it. They battled for 48 hours last season, and position really important. In the last big game, Viffer was very upset about being on Channing's right the entire game. The roles are reversed this season, so Viffer in pole position. If you had to make a prediction right now, who is the, the, the first really big clash where two guys are just going to get it in with air at some point? Who do you see? I think it's going to come out of the Trickett, Annette, Viffer group, one of those three. I think the th those three all sort of maybe feel like they're the best players at the table. And I think they all kind of, obviously they can't all be at once, but I think they all kind of feel that way and they, they, they want to show that right and is there there is something to be gained from making everyone sh believe you're the daddy or something at some point getting yeah, that exactly. last raise in pre-flop well it's like tony g would say you know he's like you're not my captain i'll show you <laughs> <laughs> they all want to be they're all kind of fighting for captain it's early in the uh you know in the, in the game right now and so there's almost kind of like this uh you know the, 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 they're, they're kind of fighting to uh, to achieve dominance, I guess you could say. Become kind of the alpha male, if you will. Meanwhile, Dinara, this is the first pot she's played, and she's in against Viffer. And she's, I mean, Viffer told me, he said something about his golden rule, don't bluff a billionaire, which, which he, he didn't adhere to in the, the high stakes poker but this would also be a nice golden rule you know if it's someone's very first pot 
right? It's a bad, <laughs> yeah. bad time to bluff them, really, isn't it? Yeah, and she makes a good call here. With, Give uh, her the rest of the money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on the one hand, he couldn't help himself, but on the other hand... Clubs, clubs. Yeah, well, that just goes to show, I mean, on... You know, there wasn't a whole lot she could actually beat here. if you think about the types here. of hands that Viffer would would have and then bet the river. But they just know that people know that Viffer can have literally anything. So <laughs> you, you just aren't, he's Canadian not someone you make a big fold against. Canadian French. Big smile from Denara, and she got to show that she's not a she's not a rock. She played the uh, the ace four officer. Kind of. Yeah. Called 700 pounds on the river. Well, it probably looked like the nuts, given what she she's been dealt so far. She's been dealt a lot of junk. I don't think she's really like you know really this tight of a player. I think she's you know there's just not a lot you can do with Duseate off Duseate off suits. <laughs> She made that look quite easy. Yeah. It's mandatory. But how do you think you're the designer of London? Chatting with the Min Rays. Don't tell me people are watching that. And Viffer with the re Min Re Rays. I'll tell you what, it's the color of the chips. I meant to raise more. Trick it. This is the first time these walking sticks have made their appearance tonight. Sam's thinking lovely. Yeah, once he starts winning, if he was losing, his bum would be in that seat right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he set himself up nicely, Trigger, for this, right? Because this is what, like the fourth or fifth time he's done something like this? Well, exactly. And a lot of poker players, a lot of good pros, all the money they win from the year will come from just the amount that they won with pocket aces, which is pretty interesting. But it's all the work that you do to set up the, the moment you do get aces to, to, to really get paid off for them, that, that uh, is really kind of the trick. So Trickett's really set up uh, this hand hand really well, and it's interesting to see what Viffer actually has. We, we see that he has one he's card. He's got a 7-10 or queen. He's in very good shape. I guess we know who thinks who is the best player at the table. <laughs> Viffer thinks he can beat all these guys with one card. <laughs> I mean, without actually knowing what Viffer has, how sh how should he play this hand if he has two pair or better, and how should he play it if he doesn't? I'd play it pretty fast if I had, because he, he can, he can uh, he's, he's going to get credit for just a lot of draws. So if, if he had something like a 10-7 or something like that, he should definitely be playing it fast. And I think you just go broke with the hand. Well, he's got he's got a seven, so he's flat called the 800 pounds and now trick it. Trying to decide between what? Yeah, this is tough. I mean, I would say check call might be like the more might be the more standard line here. Um, I think betting is fine too. It just all kind of depends on what you think of your opponent. And if you think Viffer will take a lot of uh, draws and maybe uh, you know semi bluff them by like raising you on the turn, you don't want to get blown off the best hand. But at the same time, you don't want to miss value. And his hand still does figure to be best. Viffer can have a lot of king nines, king jacks, hands like that. Uh, you know, f uh, flush draws that you're looking to get value from. So I, I wonder, you know, if Viffer, if, if Trickett thinks that Viffer would ever raise him here with a hand that doesn't beat him. I wonder if he's, you and know. That, and, and if you think that, then it's a clear bet. Right. right to just try and get value. It's, it gets a lot tougher if you think he can turn, you know, jack nine of hearts there into, or, well, that would be a straight, but say jack eight of hearts or like eight nine of hearts or some hand like that and turn it into a, uh, like a semi bluff. Devil Fish slipping into first position. I think that's the first time he's been the big winner in the big game, even though this night far, far from over. Viffer still over nine grand ahead. Six out of the eight players at this table winning, but the two losers are sinking fast. You're looking for Tells? And for Annette Overstock, most people obviously think of her as primarily a tournament player, but as she showed in the million dollar cash game last season, and I think I showed here, she is dangerous in any form of poker and quite comfortable. Yeah, sure.
people standing behind the cameras. And I, I, I've slowed down. Quite and Denaro with the pocket eights to the straddle. <laughs> so she's kind of got that online type stack that we're talking about when when the uh, table straddled, where the game effectively becomes 5100, and she's sitting on about 9500 bucks. And so she's only got about 95 blinds based on. Uh, uh, the stakes that we're playing on, on this hand with the straddle. Right, and so she's just called the 100. Now Trickett's re-raised re to 450. When it comes back around to Denara, I mean, she just wants to really call all the time here in a multi-way pot, or? I think so. Pretty much, yeah. I, I, I think so in, in, in a spot like this. I mean, she actually could, given Trickett's range is gonna be pretty wide here, she could actually just shove all in right now. There's enough money in the pot. And it would certainly be profitable, but you know, could it be more profitable? Just call, maybe flop a set, and and get all the money in. But there's no way Trickett has nines or better anywhere near often enough, given how often he three bets to make uh, to make her play unprofitable. She just went ahead and went all in. There's a lot of money in the pot, and her stack was actually pretty good for just shoving right there. Right, but she's probably thinking more in the terms of she doesn't have a rebuy. She's come all the way over here, and this is a pretty soft game. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that that really changes the whole dynamic for her. I mean, she doesn't want to shove, get snapped off by kings, and say, see you later. <laughs> anyway, we've gotten to the turn here, and Viffer's still... Viffer thinks, maybe in his mind, they're playing the seven deuce, but not everyone else is aware of that yet. <laughs> well, that, he, he was doing a Bruno here, just launching into the pot, right? Yeah. And, uh... I don't know, is three barrels gonna take this? Cool. So Tricky makes a good good call here. He's putting Viffer on a lot of uh, uh, big draws. With well, the, with his call at the there, there's like 11 grand in here now. Viffer basically has well, he's got he's got double pie. He's got about twenty something thousand back, and Sam's got about eighteen thousand back. How much does he have to bet to win this? Well, see, he could think Trickett has the draw a lot, so he could think Trickett has something like a you know jack eight of diamonds or something, and he might think that uh, Trickett's made something really marginal at this point. Wow, Viffer's got a heart here, and Trickett seriously tested for the first time. He's working through all the potential hands he could have. I can promise you, I know one hand he's not thinking through right now, seven deuce. <laughs> There's no way, you know, I mean, he's got him on all these. He's trying to figure out if he'd bet like Jack 10 here for value. He's trying to figure out, you know, what would he bet a hand like King Jack of Diamonds for value. He, He's got him on some hand like that. Viffer. Look at Viffer just sitting there. He's got him. The Show him, hands. baby. Show him, baby. Uh, sorry. You got King Queen. No, 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 no. Oh. Oh. Right? <laughs> no? I had a nine. Oh. I, we're not playing the do seven? <laughs> that was a good wow. time. Right? You bet a little bit more, I call. Wow. I'll tell you what, yeah, Trickett's nose is opened up. Tonight. He's not going anywhere. This wow. game is on, right? Yeah. Stuck at 10 grand, exactly. Oh, I had you the whole way there. Not much, but it hurts. One fifty from Annette UTG. Cool. And all the usual suspects coming along for the ride. We've got oh, a ton sorry, of people with a ton of playable hands here. Could have been all bad. kinds of fun suited yeah, connectors yeah, and suited aces and now we got the button for the king queen offsuit. Definitely a good spot for a squeeze. No one and oh wow! And now we got trick it with the real hand. Can't imagine making anything less than 800 here. Doesn't look like that much. Maybe it is about 850, I guess. How much more? 
He's, he's going to be devastated if, if, if it turns out that everybody folds. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised uh, Annette made that fold so quickly there. I, I feel like that's a really good hand to call and kind of encourage a bunch of other people to come along. Even though Trickett is going to be really strong, this is a spot where Trickett is going to be strong pretty often because... Well, why is that? Well, he raised from out of position. He's raising a whole field of players, and he's been three-betting quite a bit lately, so he's got to imagine that... He's not going to, it wouldn't be a good spot for him to do this with total rags. So I would expect this to be a hand quite often. Well, it's just he and Viffer, so ain't we got fun. This is going to be a bloody match by the end. Well, what's the standard line for this flop and what's the standard line against Viffer right now? I, I mean, I definitely think you should lead. I don't think he's going to have, you know, he's just not going to have a king too often. And he may not raise a lot of flush draws, figuring that Sam is going to have, a, you know, ace king and jacks and kings and, and, and just really strong hands, aces, so frequently that it may not be a, a good board to be raising a flush draw too often. So I think he's just got to bet it at least the flop for value, maybe even the turn for value, and then probably make a decision right. on the river. I mean, you kind of say you're never getting three streets of value against most players, but against Viffer in this spot, you might get three streets of value. If the board brick, if the board bricked off and and uh, <laughs> Viffer, you know, has what he has, he still want to trade a card. Then? He could easily, uh, he could easily pay off. Wow, check check. Viffer's picked up the flush draw. Wow, wow. I think Trickett thinks that Viffer has something like a jack-10, ace-jack, some type of hand like that. I think he thinks that he would bet uh, all his spade flush draws and his queen-10s on the turn after Trickett looked weak by checking. That's, he's going to get some bad news here in a little bit. Yeah, he, you know, Viffer bluffed him the last time. He folded. Now he's hit the flush. He's raised. Uh-oh. He's in a pretty sick spot, truthfully. It looks like his hand's weak, and there's a ton on the board, and it looks like an easy fold. But if you go really deep into the psychology of these two opponents, this is, a, this is actually a pretty sick spot here. I think Trickett ultimately folds this, but um, all he can really beat is Viffer turning a hand like Queen Jack into a bluff or Jack-10 into a bluff. And I should call, but I, he just bluffed me once, so I don't know if you'd do it again. Maybe you can ask him, you can share a card. Oh, yeah, I thought we were sharing a card. Maybe. If you, have one hurt in your, if you hadn't in your hand, just bluffed me, I'd have snapped all. Wow. <laughs> Is he really capable of folding this? And Viffer's sick enough to just do it again, right on top of showing a 70s bluff. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's what's going through Trickett's head. Would you not bat Jack 10 of hearts on the turn? No. Did you hear that? Jack 10 of hearts. I mean, he's, he's nearly dead on. Yeah. Jack 10 of hearts makes the most sense for this hand. There's too many levels on this stupid game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. And, and the, the ultimate level that he's going to find out instantly whether he was right or wrong, or just about. And what you don't want to do is be folding when you have <laughs> the best hand like he just did, and then, you know, and then, and right. then paying him off, you know, when you have the worst, but then, then, then you're really getting Vifford. So. <laughs> right, and, and that's why he's making He didn't want to, wow, he made the right move. In, in a sense, he's got a lot of momentum back there because making the wrong I'd move there would have just thrown down. him through a loop. I could have been going for the trifecta. There's not many hands you can have that beat me, to be honest. Then you probably made a bad fold. Or a good one. It all depends on whose side you're on. Stuck 15 grand, but you know what? But I can't keep showing every time. Still's got his game on. Unless yeah, you yeah. call, then I have to show. But Nia will tell you I am capable of bluffing two or three times in a row. Two big clashes between Viffer and Trickett have seen Viffer double his profit. He's now the chip leader. He's got the biggest stack. He's the most active at the table while Trickett plunging to the depths of 15,000 pounds stuck. Not that that's any bother to him.
Coming up after the break, it's eviction time here on the Party Poker Big Game 5. Welcome back to Party Poker's Big Game. Eviction time is fast approaching, and this time it's the turn of the fans to boot off a player. Reputations mean nothing. Who will the fans decide to bust out of the game? We'll be finding out shortly. And waiting in the wings, I'm understanding that Luke Schwartz, full flush, might be the next player on this table currently. Playing a little warm-up game there with Alec Torelli, but... Nerves are jangling down here on this table because these players know one of them's getting evicted. I know it's become quite common for people to like raise under the gun now as a bluff, but like Annette was doing it like she was doing it a long time ago. She was yeah. she was doing that early on. You know, What's maybe maybe this is the new game? thing. We don't know. <laughs> well, I think Warren Buffett said, first come the, uh, what did he say? He said, for, <laughs> I'm getting tired here. You used this quote in your book. Yeah, yeah I did. It was, like, it. It was like the First come the innovators, of, yeah. <laughs> then come the imitators, then come the idiots. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Annette was sort that. of an innovator in that yeah. way. I love that. And I guess now we're all just a bunch of idiots. We do. Greatest soccer players many, many years to be able to play. Okay. Who plays here, you? And I don't know what, Viff, he's like, he's like fooling with all of us by just showing us one card every time, but it's like, uh, yeah, when I first came, when I was doing the play Trick gets behind the button and Viffer's in front of it. Well, it's gonna be hard to bluff uh, Trick it here if Viffer tries. It's made it straight on the turn. Well, he must have spades or he's like a king. Something to be calling this. <laughs> How about what, what's the price on having neither? I, I'm, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I want odds on him having neither. <laughs> yeah, it could be jack of diamonds underneath it. Now he bets. How could it not be the flush? Sure, it looks like a flush. Maybe he doesn't even know. Have we considered that? <laughs> he just saw, hey, I can wrap a flush. I'll pot it. So, from Trickett's point of view, you are you can't ever fold this, can you? Not after what's all that's gone on. You got a straight. He could be trying to get you off the chop. Just toss your money in. Sounds like you had the flush. Let's say it. Seven what? It's like a seven of spades over there. Just the nuts, huh? Yep. You're right again, Dusty. <laughs> but you still would have called the river, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if nothing else, just see what the heck's going on. At least he kept it a little cheaper at 1500 Wow, had 23 grand. And looks like, I believe, Trickett's topping up here. 5,000 pounds more. Brownie points. As if the table needed any more reason to gamble. Every four hours, Poker News has offered to put 500 pounds into one of their pots. And this is the first Poker News bonus pot. And here is the 500 pounds. Good luck. Poker News bonus pot here. 500 pounds. And we saw, we've seen some incredible things done in the name of 500 pounds last year. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's similar to the Seven Deuce game where they, you know, they reward each other $500 if they, uh, if they don't do it. But this is actually free rolling from Poker News, which makes it even sweeter. It's not, the money's not coming from the players. And, yeah, you, you're right. You'd be absolutely amazed at the lengths that they will go to win that $500. 500 pounds. I, I mean, I... I, I I, I, I want to think we saw, you know, Phil Locke put like 20,000 pounds in to win, to win, to win a thousand uh, last year. So that was actually one of the, the best calls I've ever seen in my life playing poker. When someone shoved in and they were playing the seven deuce game and he actually called <laughs> 20,000 pounds with nine high. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> That's why he's Phil Locke. Six, 
So Dinara getting into the poker news pot spirit of the thing. She's made the, I guess, the, I guess it was, a, it looks like it was a straddle from a net, flat cold around, and Dinara's made it 475 from the button. And we've got the hands out there to, to, to get a big flop going on, right? Yeah, it looks like she's starting to get a little more active here, which is great. She's putting her profit into play. Trick it's called. Jen, do you want to get rid of any of your I'm sure we'll see uh, at least okay. Trickett and so Channing in the pot. And, and Bruno. It looks, like we've got, it looks like we're getting everybody. <laughs> Bruno's just show devil fish his hand. Have a look at this, man. <laughs> look what I'm playing. Give me a stack of your blue chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that wasn't exactly the action flop that. Tell you, it really we dream of this call for, for, from Jennifer. I mean, wow. See now, in my mind, this should be a uh, an easy win by Dinara. Yeah, I, I think she should just pound this flop, turn and river, there, and people are just never going to have a hand that can withstand all that pressure. It's the type of board where, unless somebody traps her with a four, you know, they're not going to have pocket jacks. Yeah, she could even get away with a little less than that, but 1,500 is fine. Half pot. Neil Channing having a think about it. Is there, if you're at this table, there's no reason for anybody to expect she has anything she can be put off of, right? No, not at all. I mean, she's been dealt a bad run of cards, but now she's leveraging that. Uh, to her advantage because she's built up this tight image. And now, like I said, she's she's found a way to turn lemons into lemonade really well, and this is just showing what a great player she is. Go on, Dinara. Butter wouldn't melt in their mouth. The devilfish with the interrogation here. A big smile there. She's ahead three grand. The moment that our eight players have been dreading has arrived. Yes, it's eviction time. Poker News online viewers have been voting for the player that they would most like to see evicted from the table, and only our online qualifier is actually safe. The votes have been counted, and I can now tell you the names of the two players who have the most votes and are in danger of being evicted from the table. And those two players are Neil Channing. Wow. The other player who might be evicted from the table is Bruno Fatusi. Oh. I can tell you the player that is being evicted from the table right now is Bruno Fatusi. Oh. So sorry, hard luck, Bruno. Guys. You pick up that? Oh. Well, I can have some I'm lucky for Bruno. I mean, what everyone. more did he have to do, Dusty, to stay at this table? He's played all the pots. Now, he hasn't lost anything of consequence. He's nearly even, but Bruno was action all night. And Channing knows he was almost on the ropes. It was fun because, you know, good, good friends at the table. I had devil fish on my left, so we had a good laugh a few times. Viper is funny as well, so it's okay. We had we had good fun. I, I, I expected to play uh, an hour more. Uh, I have to uh, take a train tomorrow morning soon to London for rendezvous appointments, business things. So it's all right. It's cool. I'm gonna have a longer night now. <laughs> You'll have a drink and then go and catch yeah, a train. <laughs> exactly. Oh well, thanks so much. Thank you very much, Cara. See you soon. Yeah, looking at the winners on the table. Viffer, the big winner, over 20 grand ahead. The Devilfish, 12 grand ahead and getting ribbed. Tilly, Dinara, and Annette all in the winner's box. Uh, Dinara has just sat down. She's making a very good start for things. And looking at the other end of the scale, Sam Trickett down 17 grand. Channing's losing 10,000. Ryan Smith and Pedersen and Fatusi all booted from the table. We'll see you next time for more from the Party Poker Big Game 5. I was on to you. I'm going to be on to you all night. Oh, you're just going to laugh at me. <laughs> I'm not going to put you through any torture. Do you want me to call or do you want me to fold? Yay! Oh, drunk people cheering for me. Go back to the 5-10 game. So you're going to be in a couple hours.
That was a rare misstep for Miss Tilly. Oh, would you stop it, Miss Tilly? <laughs> like, if you tell me it's mine, I'm going to take it.